Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Laura Noland coming to you from ITW 2020. Joining me today is Jerry DeHaven, partner at Q Advisors. Jerry, welcome to JSA TV. Hi, Laura. Good to be here. Well, Jerry, let's start. For those who don't already know, tell our viewers, if you could, about Q Advisors. I'll be surprised if many people don't know, but Q Advisors is a 20-year-old investment banking firm. Uh, We're based in Denver. Uh, There are 21 of us uh, spread around our Denver headquarters office, San Francisco, and uh, in Amsterdam. We've opened up recently as well. Um, The firm has been very much focused on the cloud communications, internet infrastructure, managed services space for years. We're we're a boutique firm, which means we're specialized. And those are really the subsectors that the firm has chosen to focus on, you know, the better part of the last six to seven years. And we continue to see, obviously, a lot of activity. You know, what we do, we help our clients explore liquidity events like the sale. I'd say that's probably 60 to 65% of our transaction volume. And then the rest of what we do is some combination of helping raise capital and exploring other strategic buy side combinations. Jerry, we've been seeing Q Advisors continue to grow in 2020 with a recent strategic alliance and acquisition deals. Can you share any of the recent news or updates with us? Yeah, sure. We, we've been fortunate enough to get, uh, I think it's six transactions closed. We've worked on a number of other transactions, including closing TPX uh, earlier this year in January. Uh, we were able to put together a transaction with Next Vortex and BCM1, who's backed by Thompson Street, um, as well as a few others, which you know has been good given the, some of the events going on in the world. And as you mentioned, Laura, we've also uh, memorialized a partnership uh, with the folks at Acuity Advisors in London, who, um, you know, we've gotten to know a lot over the last six, 12 months, very similar in terms of culture, focus, size. And it's really helped us as uh, we had expected to expand our European office um, before uh, the COVID virus, um, and that's obviously impacted a lot of people's ability to travel. Uh, and we were going to pursue this partnership anyway, but it's it's become more timely and I think more strategic for us, given what's what's happened in the world as they're based in London and have offices around Europe. And we haven't been able to get there as much as we expected to so far this year. But um, you know, it's it's. Um, it's been a busy couple months. There's certainly been some impact to us in, in terms of what's happening. Um, but we, uh, you know, we continue to work and continue to see a fair amount of activity. What are some of the industry trends in the TMT space in regards to M&A that you're keeping your eye on? Well, you know, given all the uncertainty in the world, we're really keeping an eye on um, you know what's happening in the debt markets. We, you know, because we focus a lot on companies that have recurring revenue in the cloud and internet infrastructure space. Um, we're, we're fortunate as those are still highly attractive investment areas for both private equity and, and buyers. But having said that, there's still some uncertainty. Uh, we're still trying to get our arms around what the accounts receivable challenges are going to be for our clients. Um, but we've also seen a huge uptick in, in new revenue and new demand as the world scrambled to get virtual um, in, in March and in April. A lot of our clients actually hit some of their, their, best, their best months. So, you know, that impacts M&A just because models that were in place in, in January and February have got to be rescrubbed. You know, we think that by the end of Q2, we'll start to really get our arms around what the net net impact has been to a lot of our companies. But the cost of capital remains still still cheap. Private equity firms still have a lot of money to put uh, put to work. Um, I think we'll see a fair amount of restructuring. Um, we continue to, to see a lot of cross-border activity, particularly between uh, North America and, and Europe. Um, and, and we're going to continue to do that. We haven't really seen a big shift in valuation expectations. We'll probably see some of that as, as we go on. It's... Um, some companies, particularly exposed to some of the harder hit uh, verticals, will will need to uh, 
you know, probably if they want to get a transaction done near term, have to shift their value expectations. But again, and, and credit will be a little tighter in terms of how they assess. But as I said earlier, private equity still has a lot of money to put to work in the cloud and infrastructure uh, sectors continue to be a very attractive place for, for private equity investment. We'll be watching those trends along with Q Advisors. Uh, Jerry, where can folks go to learn more about Q Advisors? We're at QLLC.com and you'll see us on LinkedIn as well. All right, go check them out. Thank you, Jerry, for sharing with us. We appreciate your time. Happy to do it. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, viewers, for tuning into JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking. Thanks.